It has been more than five years since I've done a specifically maths related subject at university. So let's see if I can solve the maths homework given to a 10 year old. This one might break me, but I'm, I'm, I'm committed. We're going to get this. Okay. So there's this article on news.com.au that I came across a little while ago titled, can you solve a maths question given to a 10 year old for homework? Has left parents stumped. Many label it genuinely hard. Let's see if this astrophysics PhD student can solve this. All right, so here's the question. At the beginning of the day, Asim counted his money. He gave his brother the one third of his money. He spent 12 euro on a present for his sister. He then counted what he had left, and it was half what he had at the beginning of the day. How much did he give his brother? Show your method. Okay. Let's call the beginning of the day money is something, right? Okay. This is the hardest part, trying to figure out what variables to call these things. Let's just go with, you know, the usual X1. Okay, X1 is money at beginning of day. Now, if I spell things wrong, I think there's an extra N in beginning there, but uh, this is why I did astrophysics and not English. Just ignore the spelling errors if there are spelling errors. So, he gives his brother one third of his money. So, brother gets X1 over three. Okay, that goes to his brother. He then spent 12 euro on a present for his sister. Okay, so sister equals 12. It's just a plain old number. That, that's good. And we can work with that. He then counted what he had left. And it was half of what he had at the beginning of the day. Okay, left over is equal to half of what he had at the beginning. So x1 over 2. Okay, so all of his money is split between one third of it going to his brother, 12 euro going to a present for his sister, and what was left over was half of what he had at the beginning of the day. So how much did he give his brother? All right, if we put all this together, that means we have the total money, x1, is equal to the money he gave his brother, so x1 over 3, plus the money he gave his sister. Well, spent on his sister for a present is 12, plus what he had left over is x1 divided by 2. So what we do now is we need to rearrange for x1. Okay, I might need a calculator now, but I, I'm sure they're allowed calculators in this, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by x1. So I get rid of the x1 on the left-hand side of the equation and cancel out the x1s on the right-hand side, but then divide 12 by x1. Okay, so divide by x1. So that gets us to 1 because x1 divided by x1 is just 1 is equal to 1 over 3 plus 12 divided by x1 plus 1 over 2. Okay, I'm going to make 1 over 3 and 1 over 2 a single fraction, I think. That's what I want to do. So 1 is equal to, I'll just do 12 over x1 here plus 1 half plus a third. I don't like to, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to use calculator. Do I even have a calculator that still works? That is really the bigger question. So I have a calculator that actually still works. I, I mean, I found my thesis, so that's that's nice. Um, but no calculators. That's right. I can use a calculator on my phone. That's that's okay. I'm going to say that's okay. So 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 2. 5 on 6. That makes sense. So 5 on 6. So 1 is equal to 12 over x plus 5 on 6, combining that 1 third and 1 half. But I can do hard math when it comes to fractions, don't, don't come for me. I, I can't. I'm going to minus 5 on 6 from both sides. So we get 1 minus 5 on 6 is equal to 12 divided by x1. Okay, so minusing by 5 on 6 down to here. So we're left with 1 minus 5 on 6 is 1 on 6 is equal to 12 divided by x1. Oh, we're so close here. Okay, so if I multiply both sides by 6, we get 1 is equal to 12 times 6 on x1. Uh, and when I was younger, I had my times tables in every room of the house. I had it in my bedroom, had it next to the toilet, even had it in the shower as well. So everywhere I went, I would remember my uh, times table up to 12s, but I don't remember these ones. But I, I can work it out. Okay, okay. <laughs> 12 times 2 is 24. Multiply by 3. 72? I believe it's 72. Let's use the calculator. It is 72. Oh, I still got it. Okay, 
So we get 1 is equal to 72 divided by x1, which <clears throat> if we multiply both sides by x1, we finally get our answer. He gave his brother, wait, no, 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 no. He didn't give his brother 72 euros. He started with 72 euros. And the brother, remember from before, gets x1 on 3 because he gives his brother a third of what he had in total. Okay, so 72 divided by 3. Again, I'm just going to use the calculator. 24 euros. Okay, 24 euros. So the answer is 24 euros for this. Okay, I did it. That's path. Now, the question is, uh, did I make this way too complicated? Uh, Look, this is, this is like algebra. So realistically, with, and when it comes to doing algebra, a 10 year old boy wouldn't have been taught algebra at that stage. I think I started learning algebra in year seven. And in year seven, I was like 12, 20, 13. So a 10 year old probably wouldn't do it in this way. However, what I see with the solution, which looks really interesting, is that they draw it out because they're given like a graph. So if they draw it out like this, as a nice, you know, a box, I love how my iPad just like makes it a nice square because I cannot draw to save my life. Okay. So they split it in half and he has half left 12 euros goes to the sister and then one third goes to bro okay so yeah okay um what what all right oh i see okay okay all right so how i've done it is like okay these two make up again five six because <laughs> from the fractions from earlier so if, if those two sections the third that goes to the brother and the half that's left over is five six that makes this one six, okay, of the of the entire thing. So we go from this one six of what's left, okay. So twelve is equal to one on six multiplied by the total. Uh, yeah, this is so much faster than uh, what I thought. Oh, I see, I see. They they going from this. They say that one third is equal to two six. And if 12 is one sixth of that, so 12 is one sixth of x1, then two sixths must be 24. That's quite elegant. I like that. There's another question in this one. All right. There are five times as many pens in box A than box B. Tom moves 76 pens from box A to box B. Both boxes now have the same number of pens. How many pens are in box A now? Okay, all right. This one has got me a little bit, but we're going to work it out. So, all right. So, five times A. Hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. Not five times A. There are five times as many in A. Wait. That's not that. This one might break me, but I'm, I'm, I'm committed. We're going to get this. There are five times as many pens in box A than box B. Five times in A than B. So, a is equal to 5b. Okay. 5 times of b is an a. Yes. Okay. Tom moves 76 pens from box A to box B. So we take them out of A and put them into B. Okay. So cool. Both boxes now have the same number of pens. So what I'm, what I'm leaning to here is that we've got A has 76 that are removed. Oh, I see. We're going to, it's, it's, it's a simultaneous equations thing. But then again, it's for a 10 year old. So they wouldn't know simultaneous equations. They probably would be doing it visually instead, which is, I like that they're teaching them this way because that's really, really interesting. My brain doesn't work that way, but many other people do work in a more visual environment. So that's really cool. So now we're taking this many out of there is equal to B. No, this doesn't make sense. Hold on. I'm sure it's simultaneous equations. This hurts. I is okay. There are five. This is definitely equation one. Okay. There are five times many pens in box A than box B. So five times box B is in box A. Yes. Tom moves 76 pens from box A to box B. Okay. I'm going to draw this a bit more visually. Okay. So from A into B, 76 pens are moved. And then at this point, they are equal, right? Yes. We agree on that. Both boxes now have the same number of pens. Because, yeah, okay, yeah, this, this is right. Because, so, A minus 76. So, like, the original number in A is equal to B plus 
76. I, I, I think I think I got this. Make this neater. Equation one, equation two. Simultaneous equations. Solving for B, so we want to work out what A is in the long run. Okay, so B is equal to A minus 76 minus 76, so minus 76 from both sides. Okay, so B is equal to A minus 76 times 2. I'm going to use a calculator because I can't do simple maths like this. That's 152. So now we're going to put that value for B into A, uh, into the, the first equation rather. So A is equal to 5B, which is equal to 5 times A minus 152. Okay, we're getting somewhere here. 5A minus for 152 multiplied by 5 is 760, all right? So that's A, all right? And then we're going to rearrange to make A this object, so bring the A across. So we've got A minus 5A, which is 4, well, minus 4A is equal to minus 76 times 10 is 760. So therefore, the original number of pens in A must be Okay, so 760 divided by 4, I assume this is a round number, thank goodness, is 190. So 0, not a 6. Okay, so the original number of pens in A is 190. So A now, after taking out 76 pens from A to put into box B, is equal to 190 minus 76, which is... 190 minus 76, because I can't do math, 114 pens. I sincerely hope that that is the answer. Okay, 114 is the answer from other people. So thank goodness, I can do math. Uh, and that's the end of the article. So there we go. I was able to do maths homework given to 10-year-olds. Probably made it too complicated, but I did it. And that's all that matters. Apparently this whole situation came to be because this guy news reporter was responding to the UK Prime Minister's pledge to make mathematics compulsory for students up to the age of 18. But apparently recent data shows that just half of 16 to 19 year olds actually do mathematics in the UK. Which isn't really surprising when mathematics wasn't made compulsory in the HSC, lots of people dropped it immediately. So yeah, not surprising. But I do believe that mathematics should be at least in some part compulsory because it is so useful. I know you may think that you're not using math every single day, but you kind of are. From going to the grocery store and getting groceries, cooking, measuring out specific amounts of different ingredients to cook in whatever you're cooking, baking, uh, whenever you look at your speedometer and see how fast you're going, when you're driving, you want to work out how long until you get someplace. You are doing mental maths in those moments. Even when it comes to just managing your time, mathematics is super helpful. So yeah, do maths. Math is good to do. And if you have other questions that you think I should try to try and stump me, whether it's maths or physics, send them in and maybe I'll make more videos like this if you enjoy it. This is Astro Kirsten signing off. Clear skies and happy start gazing.